What is interior design? Is it a decor package with pictures on the wall or is it something more? If you consider interior design as how you experience a location, much more than just aesthetics, but the ergonomics, the technology, all together, then we have a much broader range to look at and to evaluate for your facility. So yes, it's lighting. Yes, it's uh, certain elements, soffits, and other architectural elements, and much more. And at the end of this message, I will have a way for you to contact me if you want to talk more about the aesthetics, ergonomics, and overall interior design of your location. All right, we've really been working hard on all the elements and the layout and the things that go into, but why is interior design important? We want to launch into this one because we want to pull all these elements together and um, really make the facility one that's memorable. So in this specific area, we're going to include accent shelving, what that means for facility. Um, some architecture accents, you know, the soft head and bulkhead designs in your facility. Accented task lighting. Very important. We've touched on that. And this sample board integration, you know, how do all my elements come together in a well-conceived design? These are the questions we want to tackle here. So why is interior design important? We want to make a lasting first impression, right? People walk in and they get a sense of right away, wow or ho-hum. And it happens in the first five seconds. So we want to make that lasting first impression. We want to convey commitment to the diners that you have invested in this dining facility and it is a message to them that you care about them and their welfare. It's a great way to convey that. Um, it, it increases collaboration and morale and usage, right? People want to be in there. They start coming together and spending more quality time with each other. This impactful. And it elevates their game, but in turn also all the staff and everybody together. So let's look at an interior design example and um, I'm going to draw a little bit on this. And um, we start out with this with nice bones, right? We've got um, nice windows, for example. These are arched with a lot of natural lighting, arch ceilings. We've got some some vaulted ceilings right here too um, and so there's good bones a big open space that could be used for a lot of different ideas um, but then I want to say uh, well what else is going on here you know um, we have a lot of the same seating the seating looks looks comfortable it's all kind of the same color but this facility you know is designed to see people um, a spread out probably for pandemic considerations. Um, we see things like right here, uh, maybe posters on the wall for their decor. And that's probably just, you know, whoever was in charge of this one, they didn't give them the money or they have to do it through life cycle replacement. And they're challenged by that. But at the same time, this building has very good bones. Um, we might see a traditional tile orientation here. The, uh, the chair rail, different elements that maybe we can overcome with a modernization. All right, mercantile accent shelving. This is another way to convey quality. I mean, have a look at all the things that draw your interest right in here. Hmm? It could be uh, candies, uh, jarred things. You know, in, items of interest and curiosities up here, accents on top, a lot of things go into mercantile shelving, but it's much better than a solid black tile wall. It conveys a lot more. Or gore shop, gourmet shop accent shelving, if it were. I mean, it's a little more sophistication here, right? In this case, we literally have you know wine and bread and cheese and some prepared meals. All this at eye level. Um, it's, it's enticing this way. 
and stimulates interest, you know. Huh. What have they created here? You know, go in the mind of a consumer and, um, you know, you're selling your facility at every level and we want to use every asset available to you to do that. Soffit design. Let's look at this and let's, let's take it some time to, to draw on this a little bit here. We've got a nice wavy soffit back here. Then the island soffit right above this area right there. And then kind of um, a more self-contained soffit over in that corner. So, so what does all that mean? List that soffit in. It's an architectural accent, right? It's something really nice that you can see and uh, immediately notice. It defines space, you know. This space, this soffit, is for the menu area. This soffit space is for a seating area. This is for an even more private place for a seating area. And really, we're punctuating all the monochromatic white ceilings with white lighting. This changed the whole thing. Com combined soffits with pendant lighting and other fixtures, and you really have conveyed a different message and a different feel. And here, another depiction. This is a floating cloud soffit. Right up here, you have your floating cloud soffit. And above that is, um, this is a soffit that encloses all the duct from the hood below. But this, you know, imprints and defines, demarcates all of the chef cooking area where all the action is going to be and really brings a lot of attention to it. Lighting. I love this. I love this photo. What do we have here on a really good look on lighting? So the lighting here, we point to it. We have underbar lighting. It's casting these interesting shadows and emphasizing some of the facade of the bar. We have small lantern-like landing on the bar itself. And then some major spotlights right on the item of interest. But boy, it's really dark elsewhere, right? And when you use lighting strategically, you can make a really big space feel smaller than individual tables if you light it correctly. It's another major goal. So designated lighting. Let's talk about the functions of lighting. We have ambience lighting, you know, a softer lighting right there on a fixture. We have task lighting, like you see people working behind a facility with the lights working. And, and accent lighting, we have accents here that we want to show off, and it could be track lighting to show them. Um, and really, another warm feature is this, uh, that is probably the gas-fired glass encased fireplace in the wall. So that's some great lighting and is a whole nother level of interest. All right. And as we're moving through all these elements, important desire design elements, you should have a sample board. And what should, what should a good sample board have? You know, all the treatments of the walls, flooring, um, different paints. Um, this is not brick. This is laminate that can be put on walls. So it's like brick for easy cleanable. Again, this is laminate. Even a moss accent wall, you can't do a lot of that for cleaning purposes, but that is a gorgeous item. And this, this, you know, the coloration and the seating should match. The wall and floor treatments, you know, I want the tile to go with the layout, to go with the equipment, to go with design, to go with the strategy. We're tying together here, you know. We're not selling equipment. You're not doing equipment replacement. You're going through a complete process. So, the wall tile, floor tile, all these items here to give you a better look. Um, some facades that are for the front of millwork, such as the counters. And so it should be united. When it's all pulled together, we have a scheme, the lighting, the coloration, even the flooring, which is maybe a stained concrete, which is really easy to maintain. And the furniture. We want all design elements to come together 
And that should be part of your vision so that you know that and can show people. Okay, so now let's look at the symbol design elements. Let's look at everything we've learned now and put it all together in a little study here. All right, let's start out with lighting, you know. We have a variety of lighting, task lighting in the back here. We got some pendant lighting that um, goes up front for um, more of the spotlighting. We see track lighting down there to highlight these values. Uh, and you go on, there's a lot of lighting going on at, at, and being deployed here. Okay, new color. Um, all right, we've got our mercantile shelving. We've got our gourmet shop type shelving. All these in the back, providing more interest. We see a variety of um, applications on the facade here on our serving counters. Tile, wood. Um, this is tile here, and we have a nice... Um, this is a decaled graphic right on the back. You can see it. Another nice graphic right there to convey. Another element. We've talked about this, your messaging. Keep your messaging in there, right? It's all in there. The digital displays. Show them what you're serving. Make it easy for them. All right, I'm running out of colors here. Your soffit. Come on, make the soffits. Punctuate the spaces. Break up the monochromatic ceiling. Got our stained concrete floor in the foreground. It's great. We've got our collaboration seating right here where people can queue up and wait or eat here and do that. Uh, in the back here, we've got the glass enclosures that allow people to see what's going on, who's prepping that food and that engagement. This is actually a made-to-order salad bar where people are getting their salads custom-made right there at that back and forth. So you can see when it's marked up, there's tons of elements and more. Let's integrate it all and bring it to your facility. Wow. That's like Disney World. It makes you happy and there's so much to choose from. Interior design can serve you well. And if you have specific questions about your facility, you can contact me at calendy.com forward slash Hampton Oliver forward slash one on one. And you can book a chat and we can discuss the specifics of your facility. Up next, seating.